Hi friends, it's Tracy from the Financial Freedom Diary and today we are back to set up by every dollar for the month of November. If you're new to my channel and you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please do so. Uh, welcome to the family. Um, if you're not familiar with my process, one of the things I do is I do my next month budget. I try to have it done by the 15th. Sometimes it gets done around the 18th. It all depends. But I like to do my future projection early. And then the second thing that I do is I set up that monthly budget in every dollar. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a copy of October for November. That just makes the date of entry so much easier. Um, I have been using every dollar for as long as I've been on my debt freedom journey. I, probably a little bit less, but I know it's over four years. I went to FPU September of 2017, but my debt freedom journey started like June 15th of uh, 2017. And so I got the free version that connects to your bank by going to the class. And, um, that was my introduction into using every dollar. So I use this as a tool. I'm not saying this is the best tool on the market or making any kind of comparison. It's the one that I'm most familiar with. Uh, once I'm debt free, I do plan on trying out YNAB, see how it works, see if I like it, um, all the things. But that is like just something I want to play with on the side just to see how that tool works you know i'm just curious <laughs> nosy so if you see me looking down what i'm doing is looking down at my budget that i did in a previous video and i'll try to link it in the card just in case you're curious about that particular video or you may have come to my channel because of that video i don't know <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is look at my income and everything that's already preset in here and so you'll see that i still have the 8606 left to budget and that's because of that's everything that was in october at this point when i made this copy so my salary is going to be 5472 uh because y'all know this is the month i'm not doing any change we're gonna leave the change sitting there um google adsense that's going to be a hundred dollars uh savings for my cash envelopes a hundred dollars i'm glad i'm looking at this right now <laughs> because i need to see how close am i typically this is like 65 dollars rent from my sons that's 400 dollars. and my adult sons do live here they work and so that is their portion of the rent um, so my total income is $6,000 and 72 cents. And you'll see I have 162.14 left to budget. Um, so let's scroll on down. Um, so Christmas and gifts. Yes, I do plan on putting $90 in there. And so this section just says savings, but I believe you can relabel all of these and make the headers, whatever makes the most sense to you i think this was the default back when i signed up and i just left it in there um quarterly taxes i have thirty dollars and so when it's a sinking fund you can see it keeps a running tally as long as i do my bookkeeping in here and subtract out when i do spend the money out of here so i need to verify that um that is accurate because in december i need to pay these folks their money because <laughs> one way or the other i'm paying it uh, insurance. This is for my renter's insurance and my car insurance. And so it's 125. I pay my renter's insurance once a year and my car insurance every six months. And that has been one of the biggest benefits to my budgeting is that I can, um, I actually have the money for it. You know, I don't have to stress out about it or anything. I can actually do that. That was always something I wanted to do, but I was always month to month before. So car maintenance, $75 is going into that. So $651.73 is the total that I'll have once I put in that $75. Um, I do need to get my battery checked. The light came on and then went back off. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Now let's scroll down to the housing section. Um, if you're looking up here in the upper right, you'll see transactions. 
since I don't have the paid for version, I'm using the free version. Those are the transactions that I put in there. So you may see it kind of flash a little bit. It's just wanting me to classify those transactions that I have over there. Um, so in the housing for MLGW, I always budget $275 for my utilities. Um, my cell phone, my portion is $75. I always set aside that. Uh, internet is 112 and the rent is, I'm going to put this at 1062, just keep that even. I don't know what I just tried to do there. I don't know why I always kind of be messing up with the mouse. Alrighty. And so you'll see now what's left to budget has changed. I'm now at 162.09. Um, gas and oil. So for my car... I'm going to set that at $100. Um, groceries, I'm leaving that at $500 as a holiday in um, November. So I want to be ready for that. Hopefully that's enough money uh, <laughs> when it comes around that time. Because, yeah, this whole supply chain problem going on out there. So that's the thing so restaurants i'm going to budget 40 dollars for that it's going to be super fantastic they never have a little money for that my subscription is three dollars if you're hearing any banging around i apologize that that's my neighbor's little kids they're playing and typically they're pretty quiet i like them they have nice kids uh laundry 45 and cute super cute uh, personal, I am giving myself $275. My birthday is next month. So, woohoo. And then for my son's savings, um, $120. It's just $60 per son that goes into their savings accounts. This is a very old transaction from when I first started working at the company. I set that up. And so I just never turn it off, probably never will and life is good <laughs> uh health insurance 28 dollars identity theft is seven dollars um so that is accurate and so i'm 62 dollars and 92 cents over budget now i done left off something oh shoot i didn't leave off anything i forgot that i had the other savings um, at the very bottom of my budget form. Um, okay, so my debt, sixteen oh eight, sixteen oh eight. Now I know you may be wondering why am I not factoring out the, um, the money that I did put to debt using the Google Adsense money I earned from September. I leave this the way it is, the way it's written down, and then when I do my paycheck to paycheck budgets, I do the adjustment then. Um, it's just. A little bit cleaner for me that way um, but it's just a, a personal preference nothing major so now I have 1452 to budget so I'm trying you know what I forgot I forgot my son don't tell him I said that okay so on the lifestyle I'm going to add um, a line item for my son my son has a class he wants to take and he thinks He'll need a maximum of $500. But if he needs more, I will help him. Um, my son rarely ever asks me for anything. I mean, outside of cooking certain stuff. <laughs> they don't ask me for really anything. And the next thing we're going to do is scroll up to the savings section and get that underway. Okay, so the emergency fund. Yay! <laughs> Yay, I'm finally going to have some money here. Oh my God, $5.52. Oh, that's going to be super nice. I'm going to be like... All right, so let me calm down. Calm down, relax. Relax. Okay, so I need to set up a moving fund. Do I already have a moving fund? I used to have a moving fund because I moved here about... It's a little over two years ago. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is my moving fund. Uh, let's see what it says. 
So we want to make this a fund. And so the starting balance doesn't start with anything because it's uh, new. Um, and so we want to add $200 here. And I can set a due date here if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. I typically just go ahead and just move the funds around. Um, this one, since it's for my move, I probably use my savings account that's tied to my primary checking when my bills come out. Um, it'll be easier for me when I need to go and purchase boxes and bubble wrap and all this other stuff for the move. I don't need that one to be as convenient as possible. Um, my emergency fund is already at, in my credit union account because that's going to be where I store my emergency fund. Um, and when I start saving for a home, I'm going to save that over there because I plan on getting a home loan through my credit union. And the last thing, so we got $200 left to budget is I need to set up another fund. Uh, I know the first thing I need to do is I need to, so I'm going to make this a fund. That's so all I did was, that was loud. <laughs> I need to make this a fund. And... I know the first thing I got to do is I got to go and um, update my driver's license. I think I need a real ID is what it's called. So that's one of the first expenses that will come out of that fund is me up doing the uh, driver's license for the um, interstate travel to fly and stuff. So I'm going to, that'll be the first thing that comes out of that fund uh, with the moving fund. The first thing will be in like boxes, packing tape and stuff like that. I feel like it should be here, but I can't find it. And I have torn this place up trying to find it. Um, but I'm just going to just get the supplies I need and to take care of that kind of stuff while I'm looking for um, a house, like the area and stuff like that. So that's one of the things I'm having to add into my schedule is when I'm out, search areas that I actually want to live in that are convenient for my sons to hop on the interstate and go to work um, and stuff like that. And I know my youngest one um, kind of got a feeling that that little bird is ready to leave the nest, <laughs> which is a good thing. You know, I'm, mama's happy. <laughs> uh, but it's like, how, how can I help him? So let's look at our little graph here. And this is one of the things I do like. I like knowing a because you, you guys know I'm fixated on like pie charts and I like percentages of a whole that makes the most sense to me. And so we'll see that my savings is like 21% of my take home is going to be going to my savings. That's amazing. And then um, housing is like at 25%, which is good. Uh, my lifestyle, of course, that's 16%, but that includes the stuff for my son. Where is my, there's going to be, lifestyle is going to be kind of variable for November and December. Um, and then my debt is getting 26%, but we know that I plan on taking care of all of that. And that would not be an issue for me in the future. So if you see this little kite down here in the lower right, I can actually look at last year's budget. So let's get y'all scrolled up. And so you can do a comparison between my income now. Um, in 2021 and my income in November of 2020, um, not, not much of a change. Um, so you see like last year, my gross was like 57, not gross, but take home was 57, 89.03. And then you can see what kind of expenses that I had going on, what I was putting to Christmas and my subscriptions and stuff like that. I pared down all of my, uh, sinking funds for 2021. I didn't foresee the 0% interest and stuff happening, but I was trying to put as much as I could because I was thinking that it would leave me at about $10,000 left on my student loans at the end of the year. Um, but I've been very fortunate and I'm happy about that, that, you know, other things have come in and I've been able to just throw that on the debt. 
And so I am happy there. I know 2020 is a rough year for all of us, but um, I am thankful that there was a blessing in there for me and all of that. But you can see what I put to dead last November was 2089. No, $2,869.41, so which was about 50% of my income. And that used to be a goal, uh, was to put 50% of my take-home to my debt. Um, then I knew I was running at max capacity, um, and I was really doing the thing. Um, I'm ready for all that to stop. <laughs> it was a challenge. I did it. Woo! <laughs> Now it's like, please let it be over. This is done. Um, this is like one of those things that you're um, um, there. I'm like, all I need to do is just get my money, <laughs> figure out how everything's gonna work out, and then it is over. <laughs> when I put that payment in, it is finally over. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a totally different mindset. It might be why. I've I haven't, you know, like uh, my health has been kind of up and down. It's just such a shift coming. But I will be wrapping up my October budget. Got to get myself back on track because I'm starting to get giddy. <laughs> um, I will wrap up my October budget. I haven't got my utilities yet. That is the last major expense that passes through my um, checking account. So I'm still waiting on that. And once I get that, then I'll be able to come back through and wrap up that budget and say, woo, to October. Um, but thank y'all so much for watching. Um, let me know how everything is going with you guys in the comment section below. Y'all have a super fantastic morning, afternoon, and evening. And I will talk to you again on Thursday. I believe we'll be closing out my sinking funds on Thursday. So y'all have a great one. Bye.